All right, uh, I'm Andy Floor. I'm a hydrogeologist with DWR. Um, I'm going to walk you through the CDSS uh, online tools geophysical log tool. Um, I'll kind of poke through it real quick, uh, kind of give you a, a little frame of reference what we're talking about. And then I've got two different examples of why you might be searching for geophysical logs in the first place. Um, I know it's probably not quite as common with everybody else that's here today, but um, kind of give us a reason to poke through. And then um, I'll show you how to export some of those, uh, some of the files at the end. So um, the the PDSS um, geophysical log tool is basically our online database for geophysical logs. Um, you can get it through JR's favorite um, website um, at that the CDSS portal. Um, these are geophysical logs that are primarily co collected by and for uh, DWR, um, but we also reference the Colorado Oil and Gas um, Conservation Commission. They store their own logs in their own place, so I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit as well. Um, some of the information that we are holding in this database uh, is the location information, aquifer depths or elevations, saturated sand thicknesses, a little bit of construction information, um, and then there's also image documents as, as uh, JR and Kevin had pointed out as well. S specifically for geophysical logs, we've got the logs themselves. Um, the, our pick sheets, our aquifer evaluation sheets, um, and then some other associated documents like Senate Bill 5 output, things like that. So from our CDSS portal, we're under groundwater, geophysical logs. Um, so this is kind of just a quick look at what the tool will come back with when you, you get into it. It's blank. We have to get into our search fields. Um, and in here, you can search by geographic location, aquifer, and more options. As JR mentioned earlier, um, this box kind of varies by tool. Um, so specifically for, for the geophysical log tool, you've got geographic location search, which is um, primarily just county, water district, water division. Um, you can also search by aquifer. So if you only care about the Laramie Fox Hills, let's say, um, you can limit your search to those. Um, and then also under more options, you can do the coordinate buffer through here. Um, I would also say that if you happen to know the address, you can do an address buffer. Um, and also, if you know the well name or the permit number, you can search specifically for that log. So um, this first example um, is for a geophysical log waiver. Uh, so it could be that a homeowner says, hey, our driller says we need a ge geophysical log. And you as the consultant know that there's some situations where you can get that requirement waived. Um, this could be one of, the, one of the ways that you're going to use our tool. So for example, um, in for permits that are issued pursuant to 3790-137-4, that's basically Denver Basin type aquifer wells um, that are going to be used for non-exempt uses. Those permits are going to be subject to the statewide non-tributary groundwater rules. Um, and in those rules, rule number nine requires this geophysical log. Um, and that's for, that's unless there is an existing log within um, a quarter mile of the proposed wells that is acceptable to the state engineer and is representative of aquifer conditions at that location. So first we'll look up that permit. Okay, this is the, the well owner that's, that's calling the driller or calling you as a consultant. Um, we're going to, under more options, we're going to search for a permit. Um, and I apologize that these, this font is microscopic on the screen. But um, essentially, we're just grabbing one of these records. We're going to click View, get into it. Uh, this is the top part of that screen. And really, all we're looking for is the permitted location. Um, so that's going to be found down here. We're actually looking for the permitted location rather than the constructed or decreed location um, because that's what the rule is referencing. So we come back to our geophysical log search. Uh, we've, we're using the coordinate buffer. We punch in uh, 1,320 feet so that we're only grabbing everything that's within a quarter of a mile according to the rule. And it comes back with, sorry, comes back with three results. So if we click on the map tab up at the top, um, 
we can plot all these out. We'll zoom in. This is just kind of showing a heat map when you're zoomed all the way out. Um, so it says three there in that blue dot. We zoom in. Um, so those are our three records. As Kevin just showed, under map options, we can label these. Um, we can label them by name, permit number, um, I think log depth. Um, this map options map option screen is also going to vary based on the, the tool that you're in. So I just put the well names on there. Um, so now if we go back under table. You as a consultant have requested this geophysical log waiver. I'm going to go through, or our group, somebody from our group is going to go through, look at these, make sure that they're representative of aquifer conditions at the location and that they penetrate the same aquifer uh, that your permit is for. So I'll just go in, click through each one of these. This is what the screen comes back as. Um, so if you can, if you can make any of this out um, over. Um, so we've got location information up in this top tab, uh, the geophysical log information itself. So this is going to be where you can find aquifer picks. Um, so you can either get those back in elevation or in depth. Um, you can also find the saturated sand thicknesses here. And if there's any sort of comment associated with that log, like this one didn't reach the base of the Denver. Um, so those are the, that's kind of the, the, the highlights of, of this geophysical log. There's also a little bit of construction information, and then down here at the bottom, stop moving that, um, you'll be able to see the image documents. Um, similarly, you can get geophysical logs, you can get well permit and construction information, um, or just give me all, and they'll show up down there at the bottom. So I can get either the aquifer pick sheet, the logs, uh, an LAS file if we have it, um, and then any sort of associated document down there. So I'll go through, evaluate each one of those uh, geophysical logs, make sure that they're, that they're good, and then we can go to your permit um, and amend it so that we can revoke that geophysical logging requirement. So that's, that's example number one. Any questions on that? Okay, example number two. Um, so let's say you're a consultant and you're helping a municipality site a new well. Um, so you, you need to know overall aquifer depths, thicknesses, things like that. And what you're trying to, to get is a pretty good heads up so you can get more accurate quotes from a, from a driller, let's say. Um, you need to know what kind of casing you're going to need, um, your screen schedule may look like, all of that. Because um, you want to have your material available and or on site. Um, you might be running your own geophysical log, which is great, but you're just trying to get a, a bracket on what, what you may be able to expect. So similarly, we're going to, um, under more options, we're going to pull up our permit originally. And this is in the well permit tool. Um, so we'll click in through here. Again, we're trying to find our, our coordinates. We're going to do a search in the geophysical log tool. And uh, we'll just search by a mile from those coordinates. Trying to get a regional view. Um, again, let's plot those on a map just so we can get a pretty good idea of what we're looking at here. But what we know is that this municipal well is going to be in the Arapaho. So we can go back to our search fields and say, you know what, if it doesn't have an Arapaho pick in here, I don't want to see it. So when we do that, when we use that filter, we're back down to two logs, so this should be pretty quick. We'll just pull each one up individually, um, go back to our table, get our results, pull up this Elkhorn stock farm first. Again, here's the top part of that page, the location information. Down at the bottom, we get our log picks, construction info, image documents. So that's all great. Um, that's our pick sheet on the left, and uh, the top of the geophysical log on the right. We go back in and we look at the second log. Um, this one is for a log by Amico. Um, so we know that that is probably going to be referring to an oil and gas log. So I kind of wanted to run through this real quick just to, to show you what, what to do if there are no image documents um, showing up on our site. Up here at the top of the page, there's a COGCC API number uh, or ID number. 
And really, I just wanted to show you that basically the first part of this link up to the um, equal sign is going to remain static. And really, all you're doing is replacing this API number with whatever number is here. Uh, so you can use this link when you get the documents later off of our website. But um, just to show you real quick, if you go to this, the OGCC website, go down here to the database, you can enter the API number under facility here, and the API goes there. Open up your, um, open up your well record. Up at the top, there's documents. That's going to bring you to your results page. From here, you can find your geophysical log. And again, if you look at that web link up here, it's the same one that I showed you before. So essentially what we're going to do is um, put this in here as a hyperlink that will send you straight there, um, just kind of give you a shortcut. So keep that in mind. If there's no image document at the bottom of this page, there should be an oil and gas log that it's referring to. But the, our aquifer picks will still be in the database. Yeah, so the, the question is, what, what subset of oil and gas logs are going to be available on this website? And the, the answer is basically any log that we used um, to interpret for um, Senate Bill 5 um, back in the 80s. So that's, that's generally the, the short of it, but um, there have been others, particularly up in the Cheyenne Basin in northeast Colorado, um, that we've, we've done more entry, data entry up there because we've used other logs to do some more local interpretation, aquifer evaluations. Um, so, so generally, it's anything that's shallow enough to be useful. Um, if we've done some sort of investigation in the area, we, we will tend to include those. All right, so last little bit, um, this export function. So um, you know, say you're doing a countywide project or you know, you're, you're looking at something for a subdivision, anything like that, do your search. You'll come back with some results. Down here in the bottom, you can see there's, probably can't see, there's 443 uh, results in this here, uh, in this search here. So we'll just go up and hit the export button on the top, and uh, we're going to get, what we'll, we will get is a zip file of two different CSVs. One is going to have a record of, of each well that has information like permit, location, um, just some general metadata of, of those records. Um, and then the second table is going to be a uh, table of the aquifers and aquifer um, like depths or property or depths or elevations or saturated sand thicknesses um, specific to different aquifers. So once we download those, um, probably not going to be able to see much of this, but basically in this first table, I just wanted to show that there's one record for this 3D ranch well. Um, Whereas if you're in the second table and it's actually dealing with the aquifers itself, you'll have three different records, and that's because there's a pick for the upper Dawson, lower Dawson, and Denver, just as there is up here. Um, you can see that it's referencing picks for the upper, lower, and Denver. So that's all I've got. Um, thanks. If you got any more questions, uh, you can send me an email, give us a call, um, but pretty much anybody on our team can, can help you out. And we'll be here for most of the rest of the afternoon, so feel free to grab us as well.